when we think about the Big Bang, we, we have a view of cosmology which is now widely accepted within the scientific community and yet one that differs uh, quite a bit from the traditional uh, Judeo-Christian uh, view of the creation or even uh, mm. some of the creation stories of other cultures. Uh, in some ways, th these are dramatically different. Mm -hmm. The Big Bang Theory, which I would say is accepted by 99% of working cosmologists, posits that the universe began from a primordial seed, a tiny point smaller than a proton, from which the entire universe flashed into existence. And this seems worlds removed from uh, Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be light. You might say in both there's an effusion and effulgence of light, but Genesis posits a God in heaven running the show. Scientists speak of energy and matter emerging out of a primordial vacuum. Mm -hmm. What could be further apart? And yet, what I suggest in my book is that the mystical interpretation of Genesis really comes very close in certain regards to this theory of the Big Bang. Specifically, the Kabbalah, the Jewish mystical tradition, speaks of a primordial point, a single point from which the whole universe emanates. This point, in fact, expands into a circle as the primordial point of the Big Bang began expanding and really has never stopped. Another parallel is an original oneness, an original unity, which has become fractured into the world of multiplicity that we inhabit. Kabbalah speaks of the breaking of the vessels, and cosmology speaks of broken symmetry. Mm. So what you're saying is that although conventional fundamentalist types of religion have a very different view about the origins of the universe, uh, that if we look at the mystical traditions, particularly the Jewish, but I imagine you would suggest that other mystical traditions seem to be much more uh, in, in convergence with the mm -hmm. yeah, co contemporary cosmological picture. Right. I think exactly. The point is not to become fixated on a literal reading of Genesis. <laughs> mm -hmm. The mystics in the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions offer a much more poetic and spiritual rendering of the biblical text. For example, the Zohar, the major text of the Kabbalah, translates the opening words of Genesis not as, in the beginning, God created, but in the beginning, the infinite created God. So God turns from the subject of creation to the object of creation, which I think is not simply a heretical statement. I think what it says is that the God we imagine, whatever human conception we have of God, is really a secondary product. God ultimately is indescribable, or as the Kabbalah would say, is Ein Sof, the infinite. Now we're beginning to throw out a number of terms, and I suppose we better start with Kabbalah, or Correct. sometimes pronounced Kabbalah, and mm -hmm. define for our viewers what that means. Right. Literally, Kabbalah means receiving. The Hebrew root Kabel means to receive. And you could translate Kabbalah as that which has been received or receiving. That could mean really two different things. On the one hand, receiving wisdom from the past, turning to ancient sources of teaching, teachers or books, trying to drink in wisdom from the past. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Kabbalah refers to something very immediate and spontaneous. You might say putting yourself in a receptive mode through meditation, through reflection, trying to connect your divine spark, your soul, with the infinite source of being, mm -hmm. receiving in that sense. And I think it's that combination of new and ancient, mm -hmm. of immediate and past, that characterizes the Kabbalah and really helped to uh, make it attractive mm -hmm. to generations mm -hmm. of spiritual seekers. Now, let's go back once again to the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a fascinating notion. In fact, you tell a wonderful story of how, how we even got this name, the Big Bang. Yeah, it's remarkable <coughs> that the term Big Bang, which now really is universally used, mm -hmm first came into use uh, through a radio broadcast on the BBC in the 1950s. The BBC was interviewing an a, a arch opponent of the Big Bang Theory, what came to be called the Big Bang Theory, um, Fred Hoyle. Mm -hmm. And he said that uh, he was trying on air to come up with some put-down of this theory. He said, 
Well, this, this Big Bang theory, trying to poke fun at it, but that name caught on. Now really, in some ways, it's a misnomer because there is no explosion. The reason there's not an explosion is that an explosion happens within space, whereas what the Big Bang teaches is that space itself came into existence through this expansion. So one should speak of an expansion rather than an explosion, and really an expansion that still goes on today, though at a much smaller rate. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that everything in the cosmos, not only us and our planet, the solar system, the galaxy, all galaxies in the entire universe, began as this infinitesimal point, this cosmic mm -hmm. seed. It boggles the mind, you know. <laughs> if, I mean, it's enough to make somebody uh, a mystic right there. It, it's, it's the essence right. of mysticism. All is one. And at the moment of the uh, beginning of the so-called Big Bang, it, it really was, all of it, in, in, in an infinitely dense right. point. Right. Uh, really and yet most cosmologists, are, I, I'm going to assume, are probably atheists. They don't think of it as huh. necessarily a, a, an epiphany. That's usually the image we have of the scientist. You know, the scientist as, as nerd is the, you know, is the, the caricature. <coughs> I think that uh, you might say cosmology is the science closest to theology. Mm -hmm. And I think the greatest scientists, the greatest cosmologists, have a spiritual sense of their work. Certainly Einstein, Heisenberg, Newton. These people saw their work as part of a spiritual search. And I think today we're at a point where scientists and religious thinkers are beginning to find common ground. You mentioned that it's mind-boggling. And really, the reason I worked on this book was that my field of interest until now has been Kabbalah itself and the Jewish mystical tradition. But in reading descriptions of the Big Bang, it struck me that this is more wild than the Zohar, than the major texts of the Kabbalah itself. Mm -hmm.